the spirit language is revealed in, well, colors, it's revealed in symbols, it is revealed in numbers, and it's revealed even in stories. Jesus came, he spoke in parables, but all the happenings was parables. Like when he fed the people, he was the living bread. The Bible says he knew what he was going to do, but he just asked them anyway. It was a parable of the living bread to feed the people. <laughs> Come on. When he went to Lazarus, he, his friend Lazarus was sick, but he tarried yet for a few days because only on the third day he went. And when he got there, Lazarus was dead for days. This was a parable of humanity. Come on, when you read about Nebuchadnezzar, this man was the biggest tree ever. He was the biggest kingdom ever. And he had this dream of the tree being cut down. And then he became like an animal for a period of seven years. And that means that is the period it's going to take for time to work out. But God is going to restore humanity. Seven years. They walked around Jericho. Seven years to break down the city of the wicked. Come on, because God is building His city. I can go on for hours and hours. Last week, I read the story of Jacob. He worked for seven years for Rachel. And then he got Leah. Immediately, he married Rachel and he had to work another seven years. It's the story of God planting a garden and then man failed God. But his voice went after it and God is now working for seven years to get back his bride because in the book of Revelation we read the spirit and the bride says come. Come on, Daniel, the fourth man in the furnace. Daniel in the lion's den and the king come. Roll the stone away. Daniel, did your God save you? <laughs> when Jesus came out the grave, God rolled the stone away and he conquered the lions. <laughs> oh man! It's all parables. The whole Bible is parables that links to one story. This is, this is what's so amazing. 40 authors write these stories and it all points to the climax of the ages when the Word was made manifest. God came to earth, took on man's sin to redeem man from death. Oh, this is so awesome. And this is what the spirit language does in the word. So if we look at colors, I mean, of course, black is darkness and evil and death. White is light, bright, shiny. Gold is not, we're going to walk on streets of gold somewhere beyond the blue. This is all, we cannot interpret the word with this point. Gold is holiness. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. That is the highway of holiness that the prophets prophesied about. Come on, red is the color of blood and white is when you are clean. Though your sins be red as scarlet, they will be white as snow. All the colors, blue is heavenly. So colors are all symbols. You have to literally read every word in the Bible. The spirit in the word. This is so awesome. Before we go to numbers, I think we need to take a little bit on on subjects and objects. Um, like water is provision. The river is the flow of that provision. Mountains are high places or turning points. Armageddon is a high place where great ones meet strength. How can the natural mind interpret Armageddon with the valley of Megiddo? It's it's the opposite of what it really is. Armageddon is a spiritual mountain. It's high places because in Song of Solomon, he says, my beloved comes leaping over the mountains. Mountains are high places, turning points. If you look at the, the mountains, the whole church is busy with the mountains in society, which is art and government and schooling and mm, name them all. It's fine. But how are you going to reach them if you do not even understand the mountains in the spirit? The Mount Moriah, where Abraham received and believed. Then it was Mount Horeb, where Moses was called and brought into Mount Nebo. When he looked over the promised land, Mount Carmel, 
We, these mountains, every time God said, choose you, choose you, choose you, but they didn't choose. So then the fourth man came on the Mount of Transfiguration and Moses and Elijah appeared to him and said, well, this is what's going to happen. And you know what he says? He says, I have now chosen you. So there was the Mount of Transfiguration, which led to the Mount of Armageddon, where the price is paid. In the temptation, Satan took him to a high mountain and he showed him the kingdoms of the world. He had a foreshadow of what's coming, but what he did is he chose us. And because he chose us, we have <laughs> Revelation 21 and 22 where he says, come, I'll show you a high mountain with the city, the bride. You are the bride. We are to manifest on earth as the sons, but we are the bride. We are the heavenly bride. These terms, they all overlap and intersect, and we need to understand it. City is a dwelling place, and from the beginning there were cities. Numbers, oh my word. Numbers, every time you read a number in the word, you must stop and still up, think about it. One means God, unity, one God, one God. Your God is one God, but He manifests in three. So three is above, heavenly, godly, but one is God. Two is agreement. Heaven and earth was in an agreement. That agreement was broken and earth joined with the nether realm. But when Jesus came, <laughs> He emptied your whole and He brought heaven to earth. He says, I have not come to judge you. You do it yourself now. Because light has come in and people choose darkness. Four is earthy. Five is the hand of God. David picked up five stones. Six is three and three, but one is missing because this has all to do, go back to Genesis, three days of preparation, three days of filling, but they never enter the rest. This is the number of man without rest. No wonder the fourth man came and walked in the fire. And he said, come to me, all you are heavy laden and burdened. I will give you rest. And he became the Lord of the Sabbath. That is why of the Ten Commandments, we don't have to keep the Sabbath day because our rest is in Christ. This is so awesome. Seven is God's number. It means three and four. God is working on the earth. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials, seven eyes, seven spirits seven candles. They walked around Jericho seven times. Seven, 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 seven. Jacob worked seven years. Seven, seven. Every week in your life has seven days. Seven is God's number. God is constantly working in your life. You can run where you want to. He's running with you. So why don't you stop running away and follow Him? because we have a forerunner that went right beyond the veil <laughs> and he won the prize for us. We just have to stay on the track. When we run, we don't compete with others. We help others run their race. Eight means a new beginning. That is why in Noah, there was eight souls saved. It was a new beginning. And remember, every end is but a new beginning. And amazingly, all the numbers are combinations of the number one, two, and three. So your primary numbers is the most important numbers. And this is all what deals with God. God is one. The Spirit came from the Father, but there was agreement. And then there's the Trinity. It's all the numbers of God. And all other numbers come from that numbers. But then we, get, we, we start getting the, the combination numbers. 10 is five and five. It's the agreement. So five and five is 10, it's complete. This is more or less like the old Hebrew word. It's like the spirit infuses and you know, it's like when you understand the numbers, you can just see what it means. 10 is complete because there's agreement between hand and hand, working and working. 10 is complete. And this is why thousand is 10 times 10 times 10, meaning, <laughs> Agreement, time agreement, time agreement, agreement, God agreeing, God agreeing. <laughs> it's thousand, is complete. So thousand is not thousand. A thousand years is not a millennium. A millennium is 
thousand years in the natural, but not in the spiritual. So you cannot read the Bible where he says Satan is bound a thousand years and say, well, this is a thousand years of right No, it's a perfect time when death could not kill the Christ. It's the time of the ministry of God on earth. And that is the three and a half years before the cross when Satan couldn't kill him. The story of the Bible is a book of life and death. I really, really pray that I've inspired you to just start enjoying the Word. You know what? The Word is like a treasure chest. But you must go in and look for it and find it. And I find myself just lying in bed, crying and laughing, and I can't even get out just having the time of life with God and the Spirit. It becomes alive on your inside and it takes you out of your situation.